Hello, it's time for a new video. After a heavy week, heavy work week, now it's raining. It was raining all the day, all the week here in Austria. Yeah, anyway, time to do something interesting. A few weeks ago, I bought this thing. It's a GPS satellite clock that has a very nice OCXO. <laughs> if, you can, if you can see it, it's made in St. Petersburg. Anyway, it's a quite old GPS clock from Meinberg. It's called GPS 167. It has a lot of functionalities. Unfortunately, because it's quite old, it's from design is from the 90s. Yeah? It uses a Zarlink GP2050 uh, 20, uh, 20, 20, I think chipset. And it uses special antennas that are not standard active antennas. Anyway, I got this one and uh, I bought one on eBay too. Because, but the one on eBay is a complete system. But this one is just, as you can see, the PCB itself. Yeah, the B and the front plate. So I cannot do anything without the connector. And I have to use everywhere leads to bring it out. For that, I made this. This is a complete breakout for all the functions, all inputs and outputs that this clock is delivering. Including some status LEDs for the three power rails, for the lock, GPS lock signal, and from the, for the PPS, pulse per second, or the DCF. This thing can emulate uh, the DCF protocol, the DCF77 protocol from Meinberg. All the RF signals are brought out. 1 megahertz, one ki 100 kilohertz, and the 10 megahertz that are coming from here through a PLL, in, in combination with the PLL. Additionally, I'm converting the square wave signal to a sign using a low pass filter. Nice print as always. Print is from GLC PCB. It's not, there is no sponsoring or anything on this video. And the next thing is the next project will be this one. In my room, I do not have all too much signal, GPS signal. It's quite difficult always to put cables through from one side of the room to the other one to the, to the balcony. So this thing is a one port adjustable power GPS repeater or better said GNSS global navigation satellite system repeater. This is a project for the foreseeing future. Again, PCB is from GLC. Till now I use GLC for everything, almost. For everything that is not professional, for professional PCBs I'm using European PCB houses. Okay, everything is connected, except of the antenna, because it's raining outside, I'm not going outside. This will be done another day, I know it works. This is how it looks from the behind. And here you already can see that the DCF77 simulation, the protocol, is already giving an output. The three rails 
plus 5 volt for the logic, minus 12 volt for, I don't know, for whatever, yeah, and the 5 volt for the OCXO. I already connected the scope to the 10 megahertz output, 10 megahertz square wave output and the 10 megahertz sine wave after the low pass filter. And this is the output. You can see, even with my grappy scope, it's 10 megahertz. The yellow one is the square one. Yeah, well, almost. This is what came out with a one-to-one -one probe, of course. I'm not using the correct probes. Nothing is terminated and anything. And the bottom one is the sine wave output after the, after the low pass filter terminated, terminated on the 51 ohm, on a 50 ohm uh, resistor. The square weighs uh, two volts per division. So we have four volts peak peak and the sign is one volt per division, we have two volts peak to peak. It says of course antenna faulty because yeah, we are not, we don't have a connected antenna. One of my next projects will be to make a converter so you can use an antenna converter so you can use a normal active no, an active an active gps antenna for a few dollars to connect to the meinberg gps something serious yeah as i said before the problem is that meinberg is not using a standard antenna uh, and the reason is because they have at that time they had problems with the cable lengths uh, trans uh, transporting 1.5 gigahertz that's the l1 for gps uh, without too many losses you need quite a thick cable and that's a problem so they made a trick they moved a part of the if of the receiver so you can see everything is almost discrete here of the receiver to the antenna so the antenna is not only um, the, a passive patch antenna an anten active patch antenna with an saw filter behind it it has the first and the second if too the first if the, the second if at the end brings out, I think, 35.42 megahertz. And this is what they uh, supply the motherboard. So it's not 1.5 gigahertz, because if you can see, there is no way there is any microwave electronics here. The input, the this one, the SMB, is for the 35.42 megahertz. With that trick, they managed to uh, to go up to 300 meters with an RG58 cable. The RG58 cable, the, the coax cable, is not only supplying the voltage for the special antenna, where the active patch antenna is inside and the first and second IF, but additionally, the electronics in the for the first and second IF the chip the GP twenty twenty two zero one zero GP twenty ten and GP twenty fifteen for the newer models newer models these are chips that are not are not built anymore for a long time it's from the late nineties yeah? uh, needs a reference a ten megahertz reference so because of the the antenna is outside in the elements, cold, warm. They didn't use an, an TCXO or something like that. They made another trick. They incorporated a diplexer in the antenna. That means that 
there's they have a downstream to the receiver of the 35.42 megahertz and they use the 10 megahertz from the clock from the from the OCXO here and are sending it up to the antenna of course with filter. the duplexer may make its job and you have a serial filter and uh, for the for the uh, 35 megahertz so this is the this what they use for the uh, reference the oscillator reference makes of course things not very easy but again i will use the 10 megahertz that is provided from the gps receiver itself for the yeah for the reference i need for my converter converter box so this is more or less it works quite well it is a very old it's it's really old you know i know it from from the 90s i, I use these things in the end of the 90s and i'm using it still now in my day job i i have meinberg uh receivers for but they are ntp ntp server they, they're in they're embedded in the ntp servers land time something land time 300 land time 600 but in a special version yeah but inside if you open it and take a look it's the same stuff it looks exactly the same just <laughs> the date codes on the ic's are more modern except of these ones i don't know where they get where they still get these ones the gp 2015 that's a gp 2015 and that's a gp 2020 this is a chipset this is a gps chipset it was first time it was produced from place then it was taken over from Mittel and then from Zarling. And now you cannot get it at all anymore, just in horrendous prices and yeah, from China and you can hope that you will not get figs. Anyway, yeah, for that, but they are quite solid. This one uses the OCXO HQ, it's called HQ. For high quality i think you can get it on decent prices there are some uh, people trying to sell it on ebay for ridiculous prices really eight and nine hundred euros and uh, above yeah okay try it anyway this thing should not cost more than i don't know between 16 60 and 100 euros with the antenna as it is or 150 euros with the antenna and with the casing. Here, there's nothing. The casing and everything else, the power supply comes from me. I, I received only the PCB and the display. So that's for today. I don't know which will be my next, uh, my next project. Probably see by itself. The, the repeater itself, the GPS repeater. So, have a nice weekend. Cheers.